Your parents were Buddhists. You were brought up uh, through Christian schools, and you obviously became a, a physicist. Uh, how do you reflect on this fascination we all seem to find with the science theology nexus? Well, I've always had two parts of my brain that were in constant warfare with each other. Uh, in Buddhism, we believe in this timeless nirvana where there was no beginning, no end. And yet, when I went to Sunday school, I read Genesis, and I read about the fact that there was a beginning to the universe. And then there was also a doomsday, an end to it all, which seemed to violate the, the Buddhist precepts of nirvana. I'm a physicist today, and today we have a multiverse idea where we can meld these two ideas together. The fact that there is a nirvana, which is the nirvana of the multiverse, higher dimensions where bubble universes pop into existence, and there was a Big Bang. In fact, many Big Bangs, many Genesis taking place all the time as bubbles pop into existence and pop out of existence. Ever since ancient peoples looked up in the heavens and saw the stars, they wondered, where do I fit in this larger cosmic scheme of things? What does it all mean? Well, how do we progress forward? Is this just metaphor? Or is there some real serious um, uh, ideas that we, we, we can learn? I think we have to take some of the parables of the past seriously because ancient peoples did come up with rational explanations, at least in their mind, to why there are things. Now, science, of course, says that we have something called reductionism. We split atoms apart, we look smaller and smaller and tinier and tinier objects, and that's the reason why we have the internet today and radios and television, microwaves and flat screens, TVs, because of reductionism. Sure. However, reductionism ultimately comes to a halt. We busted atoms apart and found lots of particles that had no rhyme or reason. Well, now we have a more holistic point of view, string theory, which says that we have to look at the entire universe a universe of strings, a universe which explains why we have so many particles as musical notes on a vibrating string. I think one of the most common denominators of most religions is the idea of harmony, synthesis, harmony. And when you look at science, science also obeys the, some of the fundamental uh, philosophical directions that are found in ancient societies, the search for harmony, the search for unification. And that's why Einstein said that he believed in the god of Spinoza, the god of harmony, that the universe didn't have to be as harmonious as it is, but he did not necessarily believe in the personal god, the god of prayer. He thought there was a lawgiver, that is, the laws of harmony.